Hi, Chris with RC Worst here. Today we're going to be talking about pump head and I'm going to offer a simple explanation that overviews uh, what pump head is essentially. So head is a measurement of the amount of pressure required to successfully deliver the fluid pumped at the desired flow. Now the key parts to remember here is the amount of pressure required to successfully deliver the fluid pumped at the desired flow. So the amount of pressure, of course, uh, would be whatever pressure is needed. So for a home, you may need uh, somewhere between 40 to 60 PSI um, as a target number on a home. If you're filling a reservoir, uh, you're not going to really need any pressure at all. You're just looking to get the water in the tank. In, in most sewage applications where solids handling is involved, uh, there's not necessarily a requirement for pressure in most cases, um, and, but in a lot of like effluent sewers and um, on-site sewer systems where you may have like a pressurized drain field, uh, you're certainly going to be looking at some requirements uh, that involve pressure. So um, not to overcomplicate things, pressure is pressure. Uh, so the desired flow, of course, is the amount of fluid that you need delivered how many gallons per minute is typically the the question that I'm going to ask um, when when I'm trying to find out what a person needs in terms of flow. So really, there's there's going to be only two basic factors um, in 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 dealing with pump head in its most basic form. So you've got lift and you've got loss. So let's talk about lift. Lift, as it boils down, is essentially the elevation difference from point A to point B, or from, from where the pump is located to where the fluid needs to be pumped to. So that's typically the elevation difference. Now, it, it has no bearing on the distance between point A and point B, but only the, the vertical difference. So one foot vertically would be one foot of head, regardless of if the pump is a hundred foot away from the discharge location a one foot rise is a one foot rise so it's it's important to realize that when you're calculating the lift or the elevation you're only taking into account the height differential between where the pump sits and where the discharge location is going to be we'll talk a minute about flow and pressure so these are basically the the other two um, components that tie into that that second factor so when you're talking about flow and pressure, of course, uh, flow being uh, the amount of fluid that you need delivered at a particular location. Um, in, in a lot of sewer applications, you're going to be basing your flow on the amount of inflow. So um, how much waste is going into the tank or basin and then sizing the pump uh, typically based on how much is expected to need to be pumped. So in a well pump application for delivering water to a home, you may only be basing it on how much water the house is going to use, plus any, uh, any irrigation or anything on top of that. Pressure, I think that we nailed that down pretty tight in a couple earlier slides. So once we know our flow, then we're able to determine our friction loss. So when it comes to friction loss, this is going to be the second factor that's going to contribute to your total head, your total dynamic head in, in a lot of cases. So when talking about friction loss, what we're referring to is the amount of energy that's absorbed as the fluid is transported through the piping and the plumbing and the fittings and so forth. So as the liquid travels through the pipe, it drags on the walls of the pipe and, and drags on the fittings, and that creates resistance. And that resistance we need to compensate for in order to properly deliver the fluid at the desired flow and pressure. So we're talking about friction loss. We're going to look at what is the total linear length of pipe. Uh, if, so if you've got 100 feet of pipe, that's 100 feet of pipe. Um, regardless of any elevation changes, that is factored in completely separately from your friction loss characteristic. You're going to want to make sure you tally up any uh, pipe lengths, you're going to want to know what material the pipe is, and you're going to want to count up all of your fittings, and then you're going to refer to a friction loss worksheet, which um, there's plenty of friction loss calculations available on the internet. I'm going to put a couple of friction loss calculators in the description below for you to easily use and reference. And um, once you've determined your friction loss, friction loss or head loss as it's commonly referred, the unit that it's represented in is feet in most cases. So you may have 
five feet of friction loss, 10 feet of friction loss, 20 feet of friction loss, whatever the calculation you know comes up with. And then you'll have to then add that to your other calculation. So in order to get your total head at a specific flow, of course, because we're basing the friction loss on the flow through the pipe and as the flow increases the friction factor increases so when you're doing this calculation it's only based on the specific flow that you've targeted we just simply take our elevation we add our pressure and our friction loss and the thing to remember here of course is elevation is already going to be in feet in most cases uh, if not converted to feet uh, your pressure needs to be converted to feet and in order to convert pressure to feet, 1 PSI equals 2.31 head feet. You just take whatever your desired pressure is, multiply that by 2.31, and then you're going to have that number now converted to feet. So you take your elevation, add, add your pressure in feet, add your friction loss in feet, and you're going to have the total feet head that you're going to need for that specific location. In terms of calculating head, uh, this is really all that you're going to need to know for, for a basic conceptual understanding. Now, of course, there's a little bit more depth involved when, uh, when accounting for specialized systems. But for your basic day-to-day -day, uh, head calculations, these are going to be the main factors that are going to contribute the most information and allow you to properly select a pump in, in almost 99% of cases for like a residential scale application where you're not dealing with excessive distances and excessive elevation uh, or excessive amounts of plumbing. What we want to do here is we're going to work on putting together some additional videos on um, reading a pump curve, understanding suction head, and kind of walk us through the steps here. So stay tuned. Make sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this. We really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, leave those in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you and get back to you. So thanks for watching. Have a great day.